In this video, I want to talk just a little bit more about the syndrome we call polyneuropathy, which means diffuse dysfunction of peripheral nerves. So that polyneuropathy means diffuse dysfunction of nerves. So this is a peripheral neurological syndrome where the nerves are abnormal diffusely in many areas of the body on both sides. Now since the nerves carry axons of lower motor neurons, somatosensory neurons, and autonomic neurons, the kind of abnormalities we can see with polyneuropathy involve those functions. So that polyneuropathy may cause diffuse lower motor neuron abnormalities, somatosensory abnormalities, and or autonomic abnormalities. Now disorders that cause polyneuropathy may affect the nerves in some different ways. They may affect the myelin more than the axons, or they may affect the axons more than the myelin, or they may affect both. And we, we often divide up polyneuropathies into whether they're mainly demyelinating, affecting the myelin, or mainly causing axonal loss, affecting the axons. So these are those terms, demyelination or axonal loss, and we can see that a polyneuropathy is mainly one, mainly the other, or a mix of both. So if we say a polyneuropathy is mainly axonal or involving axonal loss, we mean that the actual axons of the peripheral nerves are being injured, whereas if we describe a polyneuropathy as primarily demyelinating or causing demyelination, then what we mean is that the myelin, and of course I'm drawing this huge and it's really microscopic, you can't see it like this, but these little areas of myelin forming the myelin sheath on the axons of nerves in the peripheral nervous system are the main thing that are being affected by the disease that's causing the polyneuropathy. Now, whether a polyneuropathy is primarily demyelinating or primarily causing axonal loss, we can still see the same functional abnormalities because with both ways, information is not able to travel through nerves of the peripheral nervous system, and that may affect the functions of the lower motor neuron axons, the somatosensory axons, the autonomic axons, or all of them together. The most common polyneuropathy syndromes tend to start with somatosensory abnormalities of the bilateral distal limbs, and it's usually of the longest nerves first. So usually they start with somatosensory abnormalities like numbness down here in the toes and then up farther into the feet. And then as polyneuropathy progresses, that tends to move more proximally, more toward the, the center of the body, affecting nerves that are not as long as the first ones that seem to be the most vulnerable and so the abnormalities may crawl its way up both legs. And then when it gets to about the knees, often the hands start to become involved as well at that point. And this is a diffuse process. So we usually see similar involvement on both sides. It may not be exactly symmetric, but it's usually pretty similar on both sides. And then also usually with progression, we start to see the other abnormalities, like lower motor neuron abnormalities, in addition to the somatosensory abnormalities. And these lower motor neuron abnormalities may involve weakness or other abnormalities like loss of the muscle stretch reflexes, which is particularly common with polyneuropathy and often out of proportion to the other abnormalities. We'll often see folks with polyneuropathy where the other abnormalities are pretty mild to begin with, but their reflexes are quite a bit diminished or lost entirely. And the reflexes may be lost much more proximally, like farther up the arms and the legs than the other abnormalities we can find. And we can also see autonomic abnormalities, too, of these areas. But these can be a little difficult to appreciate on examination. And where we often really hear about the autonomic abnormalities is the patients telling us they're having certain symptoms, such as getting lightheaded when they stand up. Because one of the things the autonomic nerves do is to tell all the blood vessels to constrict when you're standing up so that your blood pressure doesn't fall. And if that doesn't happen properly, you don't get enough blood flow up to the brain, and we get a constellation of, of symptoms, the main one often being lightheadedness. And of course, if that gets bad enough, a person can pass out. Now, polyneuropathy can be caused by many types of pathology, many types of disorders, including genetic, idiopathic, autoimmune, metabolic, nutritional, and toxic disorders. But let me just mention a couple of examples of these types of disorders that may cause polyneuropathy. An example of a genetic polyneuropathy caused by a gene mutation is called Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease. And that's kind of a mouthful, Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease. And these are the names of three different people who gave early descriptions of this disorder. 
which is a type of polyneuropathy that often runs in families because it's genetic, caused by a gene mutation. And there are several different types of gene mutations that may cause this Charcot-Marie tooth disease, and some of these primarily cause demyelination, while others of these primarily cause axonal loss. An example of an autoimmune polyneuropathy is called the Guillain-Barré syndrome. So I've heard this pronounced a bunch of different ways, but I've been told that it's pronounced Guillain-Barré syndrome. And these are uh, also some people's names that gave an early description of this. And this is an autoimmune polyneuropathy where cells of the immune system cause fairly rapid abnormalities of nerves, often over a few days or a few weeks. And usually this is a demyelinating disorder where the cells of the immune system are actually attacking the myelin on nerves in the peripheral nervous system. However, neither of these, nor uh, the many other causes of polyneuropathy, are the most common, because by far and away the most common cause of polyneuropathy is from the metabolic disorder called diabetes mellitus. And this disorder, diabetes mellitus, often just referred to as diabetes, involves the blood sugars being too high on a long-term basis. There's too much sugar in the blood for a long time, and for reasons that aren't totally clear, that is very hard on the nerves. And this, uh, and this usually causes the progressive loss of axons. This is usually an axonal polyneuropathy, and it's by far the most common cause of polyneuropathy. So more on the types of disorders and the types of pathology that can cause the syndrome of polyneuropathy. But I just wanted to introduce a few more of these concepts and, and mention a few specific disorders here.